Okay, this is an examination of the RCA TBL-8 transmitter. This transmitter was removed from a World War II era ship called the USS Clamp, which was a submarine rescue vessel. The ship was built in 1943. The transmitter was built in 1942. You're looking at the restored transmitter. It had been stripped and vandalized extensively and had birds living in it for over 20 years in the uh, reserve fleet. This transmitter has uh, been used regularly on the air now for uh, seven, eight months and uh, is soon to be moved from this location um, to uh, Albany, New York to be installed on the USS Slater, a destroyer escort of World War II vintage. This is one of the few uh, TBL transmitters in original configuration. You're looking at the top front. I'll uh, turn the camera down a little bit. You can see a little more here. The main door in the middle is where most of the tubes are located and then uh, the little box with a little round window is the keen relay. Below that is a relay that operates a heater in the oscillator compartment. Down below here you're looking at the oscillator compartment. There's a little door on the left side has an 860 tube in there. That's an oscillator for medium frequency. And the door on the right side is another 860 tube for oscillator for high frequency. This is two transmitters in one case. The medium frequency range is about 300 kC to 600 kC. And the high frequency section is from 2 to 18 megacycles. It's a pair of 803s in the output. The other intermediate amplifiers are 860s. The power output on um, about 4 megacycles on CW is 400 watts output. A uh, guaranteed minimum of 200 watts output on any frequency on CW and on phone uh, the guaranteed minimum was 50 watts output and uh, typically on about four megacycles it's 100 watts output. It's suppressor grid modulation. This is the uh, data plate on the top of the transmitter. Shows that it was made by RCA Manufacturing Company. Got a contract date I think of March 26, 1942. As you can see it's 850 pounds. That's just the transmitter. And a serial number of two. This is the high frequency tuning chart. This is original. You see that date there in pencil that says, uh, I think that says February 15th, 1945. See the 13th or the 15th. And then the high frequencies uh, which were put in in pencil last time uh, the ship was being used in 1945. The ship, this particular ship was laid up in 1947, never used after that. The yellow pilot light jewel on the oscillator compartment is now lit and the noise that you hear is the oscillator compartment blower. Just to the left of the transmitter there, on the left side of the screen, you see a handset it's the, uh, and a cradle and a speech amp. A speech amplifier is original and the cradle is original. The original handset was long gone, so that's a replacement, but of the exact same type. So I'm going to press the start button here right now and you'll hear the MG set come on and come up to speed. You'll see the filaments light. This shows that the uh, <clears throat> contactor is pulled in. This is the filament voltage indicator. This is the plate voltage indicator, the bias voltage indicator. These are rheostats that can control the fields of the generator sections so that I can control the bias voltage, I can control the B plus, and I can also control the uh, filament voltage through a rheostat. Now in this gauge, and I'll give you a close up in a minute, in this meter, sheet auxiliary plate voltage here of about uh, 1700 volts. Power amplifier plate voltage is 2000 volts. Filament voltage is 10 volts AC. Transmitter is the key to the motor. Okay, as you can see there, that's the uh, line voltage. It's uh, sitting on 110 volts DC. And then as we go up above here, You'll see the auxiliary B plus there sitting on about 1700 volts and the B plus is on 2000 volts. And over here you'll see the bias voltage is sitting on about 235 volts. You can 
barely see the filaments of an 803 there. And then that's the filament of the intermediate power amplifier, an 860. And then you'll see the filament of another 860 down below. That's the first intermediate power amplifier. And then that's the oscillator compartment indicator. And then here you can see the through the door inside there's an 862 filament lit there. That's for the high frequency oscillator. Okay, this is the end view of the motor generator set. This is the original one, came off the same ship. The unit on the closest to you in the foreground is the motor. That's a four and a half horsepower, 115 volt DC motor. Close up of the coupling of a motor driving the first generator. This shows the, uh, the entire motor. And this is the first section of the motor generator. This supplies the auxiliary D-plus and the 10 volts AC. And then the next section of the generator here, this actually supplies the 2,000 volts. This is a U.S. Navy shipboard local operating position with a typewriter well. The temporary uh, bridge is inserted. And the re large receiver to the right on top up there, that is an RBC. That covers from 4 to 27 megacycles. And then to the left, the one where the pilot light is lit, that is an RBB receiver, which covers from 500 kC to 4 megacycles. Excellent receivers. And in this shot, you can see the auxiliary start-stop station. That's a telegraph key there to the left, and a uh, on-off, momentary on-off switches, and a red pilot light jewel that indicates that the MG set is uh, running. I will uh, reach into the picture and press the off button, which will uh, kill the MG set, and you'll hear it slide down. Okay, this is uh, with the front door of the transmitter open. In the top there you see uh, the two 803s. There's one behind uh, the other one. Uh, you can see the second tube back in there. That shelf with the tube shield, uh, originally that was missing when we got the transmitter, and one of the tubes and tube sockets is, was also missing. Some of the associated links and capacitors there, as you see, they were gone as well. Further down there, you'll see an inverted 860, which has its socket in the uh, top shelf, so it's upside down. Uh, that's the way it was. Uh, that was missing along with its socket. And that shelf there was missing along with that feed-through insulator and the capacitors and brackets that were attached. And there's also another socket for an 860 that's inverted that is mounted on that shelf. And you can see the 860 tube there um, pointed downward. And its ear coming off to the right. I see. Getting close to time. Anybody else out there? Come out. I'll be there. Go. WA6OPE. Well, I've got the two jobs in there. IHU and OPE. Okay, well, let's see. For your rotation. Anybody else out there? Uh, I heard uh, W6GER in there, Dennis. Okay, we'll play about here, WCC calls. Echo, Romeo, okay, got him in there. Okay, well, that's 6IHU. Tom, hope you got my information there, okay, on the uh, power supply requirements to the GRC-9 and all that sort of thing. And let's see, yeah, Tom, you pass it to the other Tom, wa 6 OPE to K6LQI, to WB6AZP, and then to W6 Golf Echo Romeo, and back us up on the OPE South. That's actually. S6IE2 is a good one. Take away. W7QHO, S6IE2, and all the other